Okay, so today we're going to be talking about um, key aspect, key, key ideas and systems thinking. Um, and we're really trying to bring down to earth a little bit what we covered in the last module, um, asking how do we actually do this systems thinking uh, stuff. Um, we talked about it very generally as um, a holistic uh, view of the world. Um, but there are actually a few kind of models and a few um, representations, uh, concepts, should we say, key concepts that can help us um, start to think in systems and shift our thinking from uh, reductionist to holistic thinking. And that's what we're going to look at here. We're just going to look at four different uh, aspects. You could frame this in many different ways. And uh, this is one way to get started helping people um, think holistically. We have many tools on our website to help you uh, do that for running workshops and so forth. We're just going to look at some of them uh, now. So let's jump right in there. Uh, the first one is trying to shift from, as we've talked about it, piecemeal, a parchmeal component-based view of the world um, to a more holistic uh, one. And you can really start with the question, uh, what does it mean to look at the system of interest in a piecemeal way, uh, seeing only the parts, and then uh, try to shift that, try to reframe that by asking, um, what does it mean to look at the whole instead of the parts, look at the forest instead of the trees? So uh, these are ways to help us, uh, or methods, should we say, little, uh, little methods to help us try and shift from um, this piecemeal view or ask what it looks like to look at the world like that, become aware of what it looks like to look at the world like that, and then try and shift it to a systems uh, perspective. And this could be applied to any, any kind of system. Um, reductionism uh, and emergence. So this again, a way of looking at things. What, what, do we, um, what does it look like when we look at the system in this reductionist way, this kind of hierarchical way of breaking it down? Um, and then what does it look like from this emergent, system, emergent um, way? Emergent thinking is kind of at the core of systems thinking. We're asking, again, in the last module, we talked about synthesis. So this is asking what happens when we put things together, when small parts come together in a bottom-up way to form new emergent patterns. Uh, what happens um, there? For example, if we're looking at um, a biological organism like human body, we know when cells come together, they form tissues and they form um, organs and organelles and uh, even uh, whole bodies like ourselves. So there's actually um, emergence happens when we put those cells. Those cells in our body aren't able to do things um, that we as a whole are able to do. For example, in our digestive system, that's composed of many different bacteria and different cells. Um, it takes all of those organized in a particular way to get that emergent functioning overall process of, of being able to digest and process um, food into energy. So that's uh, an example of emergence. There are many others. It's a powerful way of looking at the world. It's a systems thinking way of looking at the world. It's a synthesis um, idea again. So we can ask here again, what does the system look like from a reductionist approach? And then um, put on these emer this emergent um, view of the world. Uh, linear. Um, uh, and nonlinear. I um, haven't mentioned this before too much, but this is a key part of system thinking, trying to shift from a, a linear cause and effect way of seeing the world um, to a nonlinear view of the world um, where, where there can be multiple causes and things can importantly feed back on themselves. There are many feedback loops. Um, uh, one thing causes another and that feedback to affect the first um, as opposed to this linear view of the world. So we can ask, what does it mean to look at the system in a linear kind of uh, way. And uh, what does it mean to look at it in this kind of complexity, non-linear perspective of the system where we're looking for those feedback loops, um, maybe individual, this court affects that, and then it feeds back to the first, or it may be mediated by many different channels. So that's a non-linear um, perspective, and this is all um, core to becoming a systems thinker, looking at whatever we're dealing with um, as a, as a system, as a complex system. In a non-linear view, you're looking at how multiple interacting parts are causing what, what we see as opposed to the reductionist approach where it's just like, oh, there's one or two variables um, causing it. Uh, so funny, um, talking about uh, connected versus disconnected. We mentioned that systems thinking is a connected view of the world. So it's this kind of networked way of looking at the world opposed to the reductionist, where we're often, often seeing 
um, separations, dividing or individual parts. Um, so what does it look like to look at the worlds like that? Uh, we talked about the bird. You know, when we looked at that from this, from the reductionist perspective, we divided it up into parts. We said it has this, it's anatomy, right? Like our body, it has this part and that part and that part. Or an ecosystem, we could do the same. Or a city uh, has these parts and these parts. But we could also look at it as the connected a network perspective, right? So in an ecosystem, we could be seeing how, you know, water is cycled through the whole thing. Um, or the network of pathways that, creatures may travel through um, a city? Um, is there the um, ecological pathways for them to do that? How things are interconnected um, is the question here. So again, that's um, gonna help us be uh, system thinkers, look at the world in a relational um, paradigm, trying to shift from individual uh, parts to a networked view of the world. So that was just trying to bring some of this down to, to earth in terms of, um, how to actually develop um, our thinking towards a systems paradigm over time. And as mentioned, we have um, guides and templates um, that would help you do that or for you to help other people do that on our website.